Hello everyone. Um, so I guess today I just want to make a trip report video on my. This is technically my second time taking mushrooms, but it's, I guess the first time really didn't count that much. And I'll tell you why. It's because the first time I only took one gram of mushrooms, and it kind of really didn't hit me like. <sighs> Like that, it just kind of felt like a small little buzz and everything's like slightly enjoyable. And the reason why I wanted to take them before, or the reason why I wanted to take them in general is because I really wanted to see this magical world that people are talking about whenever like I go to like the mushroom forums and stuff like that. And people are just saying like, oh man, my walls melted and... The grass got greener, blah, 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 you know, things like that. I really wanted to see it. Like, I had to see it. I wanted to see it. And another reason is, in the past, all the other drugs I've taken, like, I've never, ever had a bad trip before. Like, all my trips are really, really good. And, like, I make them really good trips. Like, whenever I take DXM or other things like that, my trips are really, really good. <laughs> And I have a friend, and I've read reports of people having bad trips, like on mushrooms and stuff. Like, they were literally just a class definition of the word in a state of fear. And I felt, I felt like before I did this, I could not be afraid of anything. Because I felt like since it was all psychologically in my mind, I could control it. So I wanted to see if I could control a high amount of mushrooms and see if I could prevent it from being scared although I want it to be scared so I wanted to feel fear while I was taking these so I guess I'll tell you a, a quick like backstory of how I even got these mushrooms because that was a trip and then I guess I'll tell you like the full complete story because I think it's very very unique and I hope you find it interesting so I'm texting this dude, and I'm not going to tell you his name, so we're going to call him Molly. I'm texting Molly, and I'm like, yo, can you get me some shrooms or something? And he's like, yeah, man, I can get you anything. <laughs> and he's like, just hit me back when I'm out of work. So uh, I wait for a while, and he gets out of work. And keep in mind, I've only met this guy once for, eh, I don't know. 10 minutes maybe and then it's like nine o'clock and he's all like okay i'm ready to meet you up meet me at like this street called 95th and flum i live in uh, kansas city so i'm like okay and then i remember like my little sister took my car for the weekend and i'm like oh crap i gotta ask my dad to take his car so i'm like asking my dad, yo, can I take your car to go over to my friend's house really fast? And he's all like, okay. So I'm taking his car and I'm driving on a highway. And as I'm like taking, well, before I'm on the highway, as I'm taking like my first turn to get to the highway, I see this car behind me just like speeding really, really fast. So I'm like, fuck, well, I'm in a rush too. I guess I'm going to speed too. So I start speeding too. And like, we're like neck and neck, like on the street, going at like 50 or something. And that's it's fast where I live. 50 is pretty fast. And then I look over and it's a fucking cop. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. But anyways, I get off the highway and I am finally make it to uh, 95th and Flum. And at the intersection, I notice this white car. And like the dude just stops in the middle of the street. Like he just stops. I'm like, dude, you're going to get hit if you stay there. So I'm like, maybe he doesn't know. So I like gave him a little honk honk. And uh, he just stood there. And then when the light turned green, he turned. And I was like, that's probably my dealer dude right there. I should probably follow him. He probably doesn't know that's me. And uh, he turned down uh, the left street. And I turned down the right street. And I just kind of like watched, I was like, that dude's tripping, he just stopped in the middle of the street, and then like, he was also just driving kind of like odd. So I called him, I'm like, yo, I'm finally here, and then I get to like, the destination my dealer's at, and he's like, okay, so I gotta go in this place and get the shrooms. I'm like, alright, and it's the wrong fucking apartment, like, 
it's just a rug apartment. Then he gets in my car. He's like, okay, well, there's one of these apartments over here, so can we just go look for it? And I'm like, whatever, man, let's go. So we're, like, driving around, and we go to three other apartments before we get to the right one. And it's just it's just a fucking, like, it's crazy. So we finally get him. And he's like, yeah, man, I finally got him, dude. And I'm like, word. And, like, it's just this little baggie full of, like, a shit ton of little shrooms in there. Like, it's, it's like, a whole bunch of them. They're, they're only about, like, this big. And it's a lot of them in there. And I was like, so this is four grams of them, right? He was like, yeah, man. He was like, dude, I took these one day. And everything just started tripping. I only took one gram of them, too. And he was like, yeah, I got the guy to throw in some extra spores and blah, blah, blah. And he, like, continued to tell me a small trip that he had on the one gram. And I'm not going to get into that because that is a different story. But anyways, finally get home. And I was originally playing a game on my computer with my Skype friends named Marcus and Nathan. And I tell Marcus, like, yo, I got him. And he's like, dude, webcam, let me see. So I get on my webcam and I'm showing them them. And I bought a Snickers bar because I know that my first time I took them, I ate it. I ate them with a, a Snickers and I couldn't taste the, the horribleness of the mushroom. Because it doesn't taste that good. So, I have my Snickers bar, and I have my shrooms, and I have Marcus on webcam with me. And here I am taking, like, half the bag, thinking it's, like, two grams or something, because I don't have a scale. Like, I just, I don't, I suck. And I took half the bag. And then I continue to play this online game. And I'm playing this online game, and, like, in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking, man, what if these don't work? What if I got ripped off? Fuck. Fuck. And it's been like 40 minutes or so, and I notice like small things happening, just like, like small, like, kind of like wavy things, just like everywhere I look, if I just kind of like, went like that a bit, I'm just not really focusing on anything, just like, just a little bit, kind of like a tingling sensation. And it was really, really small, so I'm thinking, man, I got ripped off. And I'm playing this game. And then I notice I get like a really bad stomach ache, kind of, but I kind of just like play it off because I'm really good at like controlling like my stomach, I guess. I have a really good one. And I'm like, oh, fuck, no, my stomach is hurting. Fuck. And I'm just kind of like, I'm just generally just upset thinking I got ripped off. So I turn off the game because the actually the trip was starting to become a little bit more developed. <laughs> And I'm like, man, fuck it. I'm just going to go to bed. I'm just pissed. I'm going to go to bed. So I light these two candles. And I'll show you one of them. I just got these from Walmart. And as you can see, it's pretty fucking gone. And just a quick history about the candle. Um, I've lit this candle every day since I've bought it for two months. And it's still not gone. Like, the wax, it melts. And then when I blow out the candle, it hardens. And then I just kind of repeat. So it's like a never-ending candle almost. And I've watched the candle for a long time too. And I can tell you these one things. I've never seen like smoke from the candle, like from the little thingy that is actually burning. And I've never ever smelled it as it was burning. So just remember that. So here I am on like a small stomach ache, and my trip is kind of coming on just a little bit. But I didn't know it was a trip because I was just in such a pissy mood thinking I got ripped off. And I'm just like, okay, well, since I'm kind of giggly and the trip's really, really light, maybe I should take some more. So I take like another, so I took half of what was left in the bag still. So total is like three-fourths of my bag. And I'm just, at the time I'm thinking, doing it, like, the first bite I took, I don't know, I felt something, and it just hit me. It's like, what the fuck was that? And then I'm like, okay, whatever. It, like, it came and it left. And Marcus is still on Skype, and, you know, we're just having a conversation. I have my two candles lit, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to turn off my lights. And I'm just kind of, like, laying down, <clears throat> and I'm looking at my wall, right? Over here, I'm not going to turn my camera or anything. Yeah, well... I'm looking at this wall right here. There. 
behind the TV. And it's casting these shadows because I have this black thing right here. I have that black thing right there spinning and it's a little heater because my house is pretty cold. And I guess whenever it turns toward the candles, it makes the candles move rapidly. And I knew that was the case of my candles being so rapid. And as I'm just watching the, the shadows on the wall, my, my room's completely orange and I'm listening to Dead Mouse. And I had just downloaded all of Dead Mouse, like all of it up to this year, every single song. And I'm just watching it. And it was mesmerizing. And I didn't know why. And I'm trying to explain to Marcus like what I'm seeing. And then I look up to my ceiling fan right here. And it uh I play a lot of games and I guess I can say it looked high definition, like it looked really, really just HD, like the colors on it were so, so different. And I was like, what the fuck? And as I'm staring at it, like, I don't know, it's not even moving, but it's so, so mesmerizing. And after a while, I'm telling Marcus, like, my walls are dancing for me. My, ro my walls are dancing. They're telling me to, like, enjoy this trip, get off of Skype, and just enjoy and watch, see what happens. So... I tell him, I, I get off my computer, I close it down, it gets, it gets significantly darker because of my screen bright in my room. And everything just gets more, just, I guess the only way I can describe it is HD. Everything just became way, way, way more developed. Like, my ceiling fan, it, um, the way it looked was... It was just so vivid. Everything was so vivid, I guess. And it's nighttime. And I, I would like to say I think logically about everything, right? And I couldn't make sense of why everything looked like this. And I knew that I was on shrooms, but I just, I was trying to turn it off just to see if I could. And it <laughs> wasn't going off, that's for sure. And I'm listening to Dead Mouse. And everything's dancing in my room. And like, in the corner of my eye, I look over and I could have sworn I saw a ghost. It was just crazy. Like, I have this mask right here on my wall. That little horse mask, that donkey thing. And I look at it. And I'm like, I wonder if that thing's going to scare me. And slowly, just the shadows on it just became so, so, so developed. Everything just became developed in my room. And I was like, fuck. Wow. And my guitar over here. Wait, is that the right word? Yeah, you see my guitar? The shadows it made, they looked like little hands waving like this. But they were, they soon became claws. And it was slightly scary, but I was like, whatever, I guess I got claws in my room. And then I looked over at that mask again, like maybe 10 minutes later, and... I don't know, it just wasn't a friendly mask anymore, anymore, that's for sure. But anyways, I just ignored those two things that I thought to be just slightly scary, and I just kept looking at my walls and at my ceiling fan. And I'm watching my ceiling fan, and it slowly becomes transparent. It's almost see-through. And then Marcus calls me again. Wait, no, not yet. And then, like, I'm looking at the, the fine lines on my walls, like, you know how, like, my room... Your room is kind of like that. And I guess this this point right here became more bent, like so. So it wasn't like wall, ceiling. It was more like it became a dome. And it was like that all around. And I'm just staring at my wall, and I noticed this, this black thing forming from the middle of it. And I tried to make sense of it. And I was thinking, that's not a shadow. And I'm looking around trying to figure out what's creating that shadow on my wall. And I couldn't figure it out. I just simply couldn't. And then all of a sudden, something starts coming out of that. And it was coming out, and it was a very, very frightening figure. And that's for sure. I remember I was not thrilled to see that coming out of my wall at all. 
And as it's almost completely out, I'm thinking, shit. But then Marcus calls me. And it, everything snaps off. Like, literally, my entire room stops dancing. The shadows are kind of, like, back to normal. Because my screen, it came back bright. The donkey mask is kind of just, it's sustained. Everything's normal again. My room is orange and all, but everything's just normal. Like, when he called me, everything went back to normal. So I thought, wow, my friend just saved me from, like, a fucking shadow monster that was coming out of my wall. So then I tell my friend about this shadow monster, I guess. And then he's laughing and all. And I eventually, we end the call. And as soon as I turn my brightness down on my screen again, the room goes right back to this crazy magical dancing place. And like, I saw owls in my room, like so many owls. And I didn't, I can't tell you, I literally saw the full forming of an owl, but I hallucinated and saw owls. And I guess if you know what I mean by that, then you know what I mean. But if you don't, then I guess the way I can describe it is just like small shadows. I don't, I can't, I can't, words, words can't, I don't know the word, the proper words to describe it. But I saw a lot of owls and I saw elves. I saw a dinosaur. I saw so much things in my room and everything was just circular. It was just so circular. And I don't know, I was so happy. I was I was I was legitimately so happy. And I couldn't make sense of everything that was happening. And no matter how hard I tried to make things go back to normal, that's when I realized this was normal. Like this was the state of my room. This was just how it looked. Everything just looked more sharp and more vivid. And the colors kind of just blended together, so I just felt like my vision was slightly impaired. But this was my room, and it was so, so real. Like, like on, whenever I take DXM, I kind of like, I trip out, and I, you know, I go somewhere else. But on here, I stayed in my room, and things just came to life. Everything just came to life. My walls came to life. Everything was just alive. And I couldn't make sense of all of this, no matter how hard I thought. I tried to think about all the shadows that were being created from the fan blowing, and I tried to just make logical sense of everything I'm visualizing, and none of it made sense. And I was legitimately, like, for once in my life, in a state of confusion. And I was so confused that I just started laughing. I just started laughing, like, I... like. I felt like, now that I think about it, I felt like I was a nut. I was going insane. But it was just so funny to me, and I was so happy. It was the greatest trip ever. <laughs> and, <clears throat> um, the trip kind of just like, it's still going on. But then I'm like, okay, well, I'm in control, so I feel like going to bed. So I'm going to go to bed. So I get up, and I blow out my candles. And I lay down, and I'm like, I'm just going to listen to Dead Mouse. Oh, and another thing I kind of left out was, I had bought myself some uh, some new earbuds. And these are like the Dre Beats earbuds, I guess. And just, I should have listened to the warning, I guess, when it said, uh, don't shove them all the way in your ear. But I did anyways, and I heard, like, I could feel the bass just just rumbling, thumping my ears in this thing. Like, it was fucking insane. And I'm just kind of, like, closing my eyes, and I'm having these crazy visuals with my eyes closed. And I guess, like, just time goes by, and I'm just still listening to Dead Mouse. And then I open my eyes, and my wall is still just, like... I look at my ceiling, and it's so great. Everything above me is just so grayed out. And I'm, I'm looking, then I start to see, slowly see this black thing forming out of my ceiling. And I'm trying to make sense of what that is. And after a while, it's my uh, my ceiling fan. And it's slowly like coming into form. Slowly. And even after a while, like 
I had made sense of it to be my ceiling fan, but it just, it never looked like my ceiling fan. And I stared and I stared and I stared at it, but it never looked like my ceiling fan, but I knew that's what it was. But it almost looked like a sticker, something that I could peel off. I don't know. So I was impressed and then I noticed like, this huge shadow of my ceiling also and I had no idea what was casting that and it was just legitimately moving rapidly just a lot it was like, and I was like whoa so I kind of just like closed my eyes again and I'm just like watching these these closed eye visuals listening to Dead Mouse and like a frightening song came on with Dead Mouse I don't know it's not like the trance music I usually listen to like above and beyond and Cascade, you know, stuff like that. His music is very, very different. And I'm listening to this song, and it's, I guess the beat is going, it's like, boom, 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 tap, boom, 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 tap, boom, 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 tap. And like in the background, you hear like this weird, like vibrating sounds like, it's the, it's a sound like that. And then all of a sudden, I start hearing like this little boop, boop. You know that little thing when you're in a hospital? Boop, boop. Like that thing? I start hearing that from the song. And for some reason, like that represented me, like my current state. And it was getting really, really fast. And I was kind of freaking myself out. And I was like, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck? And as like the thing is like intensifying a lot, I don't remember what was going on, even right now, no matter how hard I try, even at the time it happened. What I'm going to tell you next is something I just don't remember happening. I don't know what was happening to me. I don't know what I was seeing when my eyes are closed. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what was going on. But all I can remember is that music playing boom, 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 tap. And like that, that vibrating, that little... That noise. And just like, I don't know what happened. I can't really remember it. But then my friend Nathan calls me on Skype and he's like, hey man, what's going on? And it took me a while to answer the call. And I guess the way I, I remember it was I was kind of just like pulling shit off of me when my eyes closed. I was laying down still, still. But just mentally, I was like pulling things off of me and just like really fast, just tearing it off so I could like free myself, I guess. It was like something was grabbing me and pulling me down. And it was really hard to get out, but I eventually freed myself and got out. And um, I answered the call and Nathan's, Nathan's like, hey man, what's going on? And then the, the next thing I do is I'm like... <laughs> and I'm just breathing heavily, just super super heavy breathing like I have I can't make logical sense why I'm out of breath either because I was just laying down I had no clue what's going on I was just breathing heavily and I told Nathan like I felt like he almost saved my life with that phone call because I was tripping so so hard but I don't remember it it's, I don't know what was I don't know what was happening to me I have no clue what was happening to me but I remember I was out of breath for the longest time when I was talking to Nathan. And like, I just, I had to literally sit down and take a breather, just like. <sighs> I had to do one of those just to collect myself before I could actually begin my conversation with Nathan. And I guess, I don't know, like that phone call, I, I know if he wouldn't have called me in the track the line, that beeping noise, like in the hospital, would have went boop, boop, like that. And God knows what would have happened to me if I would have, if he wouldn't have called me and I would have heard that. I don't know. But he called me and snapped me out of it, I guess. And I was just so out of breath and stuff, but we talked for a bit. And then he invited Marcus to my Skype call, and I was just telling these guys everything that was going on. And 
honestly, my room became a really, really scary place. Everything became scary to me. I was so happy earlier with the candles on. It was like orange and I, it was so nice. But then just everything became scary. And I'll explain some other stuff in a bit. But we hung up. And then I remember it, like, after a while, I turn back on the song, and I'm kind of just, like, sitting up listening to the song, and the the track didn't be cool, like, Ooh. and I was just thinking, wow, if Nathan would have never called me, what the fuck would have happened to me? It was, it was insane. So I'm just laying back down, and then after a while, I remember, I have to use the bathroom. So I, I get up. And this dog that's sleeping right there on the floor was sleeping on that futon, but I didn't have my clothes there. Anyways, I get up. And I walk to my door. But something happened to where my mind didn't register that walk. I don't know what it was, but my mind just did not register the distance that I traveled from my bed to the door. And even by the time I got to the door, it didn't register. And then it, it all hit me at once, like, and I'm standing, like, like, inches, centimeters away from the door, like, my nose is right at it. And I had no reason to be standing that close to my door, but that's how close I was standing to it. And I just kind of, like, stop and I blink, like, the fuck? And the way it felt for me, I know, I know I walked. My mind knows that it walked there, but it didn't register. And the way it felt was I teleported there. That's how it felt for me. And I didn't like that sensation, not one bit. <laughs> and I looked over to my dog. And I noticed my dog just was just this, this black thing just laying there. And it almost looked like a bear was sleeping in my room. Because he was huge. And my puppy is small. <laughs> He's a little tiny dog. Like in my in this trip, he was a huge bear. So, anyways, I stopped tripping at my door. Like, I'm like what the fuck? And I opened my door, and I kind of like, I'm in a state where I'm kind of scared, and I don't know what's outside of my room, and I kind of like you know peek, peek over, to look. And I have a kitten named Jojo. And, like, my hallway, I can see just, like, just a little bit, because my hallway turns, so I can kind of see just, like, a little bit of a nice, like, path to walk. And out comes Jojo, walking right up to, like, the distance from my room to the bathroom, and he sits at the entrance to the bathroom. And this is unique, because our cat Jojo, we found him from outside. He is originally a stray cat. And he's still not used to people, so he runs away from us. Like, he runs away from us. But only in certain times will he ever, like, approach you and say, Hey, you can pet me. But 90% of the time, he will not let you touch him. He will run away from you. And I thought it was unique for him to approach me like that. At, like, 2 o'clock in the morning or midnight, whatever time it was. And... He sat there, and I kind of left my room, and as I entered the bathroom, something happened, and my knees, just, my legs died. Like, I had no strength in my legs anymore. It was all gone. All my strength in my legs were gone. And I'm lying on the floor. I collapsed. I hit the floor so hard. And there was absolutely nothing I could do to prevent that from happening. It happened. And I just fell on the ground. And then here comes Jojo, walking right up next to me. And he does like this little spin. And I've never seen that cat do that spin before. And I said, hey Jojo, come here. And I called him Jojo. I don't think he liked that, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'm just tripping too hard. But he like kind of like left. So I get back up and I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm about to stand up and pee. Fuck that. And the light is dark in my bathroom. So I'm kind of just like sitting on my toilet like pink. And I'm just like, this is fucking insane. And I look over and I see Jojo at the door. to the entrance of the bathroom, like the door. And he's sitting there. And he's sitting in a perfect figure. I mean, it was beautiful. My cat was sitting perfectly 
looking up like his posture was amazing. As I'm looking at him, something told me like that was not Jojo, that was not my cat. It didn't even look like Jojo, the cat was all black. He was super, super graphic. He looked like, like a drawing, almost. Like a nice sketch of a cat. It was all black, and it was just made of nothing but shadows. And then he like, I was like, if you're not my cat, then I shouldn't call you Jojo. So I'm like, come here, kitty. I call him kitty. I never called Jojo kitty. I said, come here, kitty. And he like goes, meow. And he walks right up to me and like brushes against my leg. That was the oddest thing to me, because my mind made sense of it to be, dude, you are tripping, and that is your cat. But at that time, that, I don't know what was going on, but that was not my cat. My cat never did that in his life. I had that cat for a year. He's never done it. He's never done that. He's never really approached someone when you said, come here. But he did that time. And I got to pet my cat, and his fur felt so soft. Everything was so soft. He was almost playing with me. He like, he like smacked my hand and like tried to bite me a little bit. He was playing with me. That cat was playing. My cat never plays. It was so weird. And I couldn't make sense of like, whose cat is this? I mean, my, in the back of my mind, I knew it was mine. But then I was like, in this trippy world, whose cat is this? And it's all the while, like, I can still hear this dead mouse music in my mind. Just like, just still going on. And my cat, just, it was so odd. So I guess I leave, and I'm in my room again, like at the entrance, and I look at, like, my jeans on the floor. And at the time, I didn't know it was my jeans. And it looked like molded pumpkins in a body. And it scared the shit out of me. I was just staring at it, and it, it froze me. It paralyzed my body. That's how afraid I was. I couldn't move. I could not move. And I'm just staring at it. Like mouth open and everything. Just shocked. Just completely afraid of my jeans. And I just stared at it. And like my mind processed. Almost over like a hundred things. Of what could this be in my room? Because I know I'm tripping. So that can't be a pumpkin in a body. It has to be something. So I was like. Fuck it, I'm just going to pick it up. I have to pick it up. I couldn't figure out what it was, so I picked it up. And then I saw my, my belt, and I was like, it's just my jeans. I put it back down. But what I, what I picked up was like a pumpkin. <laughs> it wasn't my jeans. It felt like a pumpkin, too. It was so odd. And my room was such a scary place. <laughs> but I was like, I'm just going to have to face my fears and just say, fuck it. Like, I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to have to deal with it. Like, I wanted a bad trip. Here it is. Deal with it. So, honestly, I kind of just dealt with it. And I I just accepted the way things were. And I started thinking, why am I being such a pussy? Why does this stuff have to be scary things? Why can't this just be the true nature of the way things are in the world of the magic mushrooms? So I accepted things the way they were in this fucking magical world, I guess. And it wasn't really scary anymore. I was, I accepted them for what they were. And in my mind, yeah, it still was like things I'm not accustomed to seeing, you know, so frightening. But I wasn't in a state of fear anymore. I guess I had conquered it. And as I'm laying back down in my room... <clears throat> I put on my headphones again, and I'm like, I'm tired of Dead Mouse fucking me over. His music is scaring the shit out of me. And like, as I'm laying down, I'm just thinking, okay, here we go. It's me versus you, Dead Mouse. Let's go. <laughs> like, I had conquered my fucking cat. I had conquered the fucking scary pumpkin pants. I had watched my room dance and these orange lights and shadows. I watched demons come out of my wall. I seen owls and elves. Owls? Owls and elves. My fucking horse mask came to life. My dog was a bear. I I seen it all. I had conquered like everything. And the only thing left was just to conquer this music. So I put back in the headphones. And like. 
something happened, and I was trying to fight him, like, I don't know, I was just trying to fight Dead Mouse. <laughs> and after a while, I realized, like, I'm never gonna win. And I guess the logical sense I made was, he's already dead. <laughs> and it was just so funny. And his music just kept scaring me, I guess. But I wasn't scared, but his music was kind of scary. And something happened again. And after like 10 minutes of me trying to fight against Dan, I was like, something happened. My friend Nathan called me again, and he saved my ass. I don't know what was going on this time. I don't know what was going on. But this time, I really felt like he fucking saved me. Again. And here I am thinking I'm about to win. Like, I'm thinking I'm about to beat this world of the magic mushrooms. I'm going to win. But I'm getting pulled out by Nathan again. In a way, when he called me, what that felt like to me was... I was down inside a swimming pool full of blood. My vision was murky. And just like this hand comes down. It brings me out. That's what the Skype phone call, when it started ringing... That's what that felt like to me. He saved my ass again. And I was like, I'm never going to beat that mouse. Like, I'm just going to keep getting my ass kicked. And I was like, if I can't beat him, then I'm just going to have to accept it. <laughs> so I talked to Nathan for a while. And then I hang up. And this is our last phone call conversation. And I'm just kind of just like laying down in my bed. And I'm just like... I lose. <laughs> I just lose to Dead Mouse, I guess. And I don't know. After a while, like, my trip started to kind of like end. And this has been over the course of like maybe four hours or so, like three to four hours. And I was, I was honestly so impressed of what those mushrooms did to me. Like, it was amazing. Like, I got to visit that world for a short while and actually live in it and it's so different from whenever I take DXM and stuff because with DXM it's kind of just like you close your eyes and then you travel somewhere but here you stay where you are and it comes to you and you stay in that world and you live there and no matter what you do you can't shut it off it just stays. That's what it was like for me. And I don't know. It was weird because like I was I went from a it was just this amazing trip to like a, a rather quite frightening trip. Then like I just I kind of just got over it, and I just accepted things the way they were in this scary world. And I kind of just like lived there for a bit. I lived in this magic mushroom world where things were scary as shit, but I wasn't afraid anymore. And I kind of just put back in my headphones, and the music stopped scaring me, too. The music stopped scaring me. I looked over to this, my blinds, and they were just kind of just like moving a little bit. Everything was kind of dying down, but everything, my vision was still kind of impaired, I guess. Because everything in my room was gray. Everything was gray. And I couldn't see my ceiling fan or anything like that anymore. And in my room was still a dome. And then after a while, I was like, I think I'm done. I don't know, I felt like I was done. And the music ended, like the album ended. And I listened to multiple albums from Dead Mouse. But it ended and iTunes like just stopped. And I'm just kind of just like, just breathing kind of heavily to myself. With no music. And I'm just kind of like having a recap of everything I experienced this night. And it was so amazing. Like, I don't know. And I guess that's kind of just like the end of my trip. I just kind of rolled over and went to sleep. <laughs> that was my trip. I know I missed out on a lot of things. Like, a lot of things happened to me. <laughs> While I was tripping. A lot more things happened. But that's kind of just like the short version, and this is a 40 minute video, but that is the short version of my trip. <laughs> Summarized.
And I guess a, a question you guys might pose is, so would you ever take him again? Now, honestly, like, I don't really, like, do things like that to get high or to, like, you know, have a crazy-ass trip or something like that. I took it because I wanted to experience something, and I experienced it. And honestly, I don't think I'm ready to go back to that magic world of mushrooms. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to go back. But I would. I would, given the opportunity. But I don't think I'm ready right now to go back. See ya.